So the first purge, so people will be familiar with the concept of the purge. The, it, it sort of speaks for itself, but could you tell the, the, the viewer uh, the, the idea behind the first purge? Yeah, most definitely. The first purge is essentially twelve hour, the one day of the year where for 12 hours all crime is legal. And it's an experiment which is launched by the NFFA in order to see if this is something that the country of America needs. And the NFFA there, so this is the... The New Founding new, Fathers. Right. Of America. The, it's, it, there's, there's elements, I think, think as these purge films have gone on, they've become sort of more, like real life has come to meet the purge in the middle somewhere, hasn't mm -hmm. it? Do you think they're kind of more relevant and pertinent than they've ever been? Most definitely. I think, you know, when you watch the film and, and people watch it, they're they feel like, oh, hold on a minute, like the first one is like, that's an amazing concept. And now it's like, yo, this feels like it can happen next week. And I feel like that merge is is really evident. And James does an amazing job in staying on point when it comes to the political side. And, you know, he writes these films and by the time you shoot them and bring them out, they're so relevant, it's unreal. It's like, you, how did you write this when you wrote it for for, for now? And so did you speak to him about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. did he, is, I, I mean, does he find it surprising that there's, you know, that real life is kind of meeting him he's just got a gift that. he's just got right. a gift and like you know you see you see the the forefront of what could potentially happen and timing meets his 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 fiction and and yeah. and it, it just collides and and we get what we get there is a lot of kind of political comment and sort of satire in there there's mm -hmm. a line where someone talks about grabbing someone by the pussy was it was this a direct trump reference to that one um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I would. I, I could assume so. Um, but it's. I think there was a lot of elements of the film in which we were just like, yo. Like even sometimes we came off. We came off script, and we was like, yeah, let's throw in. Let's actually be a part of this, and let's you know, right. like, let's take. Let's really home in on these characters, and what are we feeling? What are we thinking? Like the government has launched something in which is said for twelve hours, you can kill whoever you want, and there are no consequences what on earth is going on, you know? And we uprise and we, you kind of take it on board to, to, you have an opinion, you have a say. And this film gave us an opportunity to do so and you embody the character and, and we say what we needed. So yeah, people threw lines in there and they said things in which were direct references, some of which were more direct than others. And, and that's what makes this film great. It's, it's not the kind of film where you need to improvise too much. You know, when you're carrying a knife around, you don't want to be improvising the old stab yeah. in here and there. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Um. <laughs> So it's a, it's, it's a film, it's a mainstream film with yeah. a, a predominantly black cast. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, I don't know if, uh, what the, the timescale was, but the success of Black Panther, has this made it more easy to kind of market these films for mainstream audience? Yeah, well, I'd like to think so. Like, I think, you know, like the, the I film... I say these films, I mean films with a predominantly, predominantly yeah, black yeah, cast, yeah, which is like, something that was too unusual before. It, so, exactly, yeah. and I feel like, you know, the, the, the success rate gives more confidence to be able to do so. And this film was written long before the, the Black Panther came out and everyone saw the success of it, even Get Out, you know, and mm. as a, a prime example of those themes being talked about and doing so well, this was written before that time and it's just started to catch up on itself and I feel like everyone's been in that motion where it's a new time, it's a new era, it's a new space where we are fusing and, and, and colour is becoming less and less prominent. At the same time, there is more of a conversation about it. Mm. And yeah, man, I, I pray that... This is an opportunity where each film with a predominantly black cast that does well gives more opportunity for more stories to be written and more characters and more jobs to be given to black actors. Did you worry about the representation at all? Because we, um, you know, there's there's black drug dealers and, and black people living in the projects. Did you worry that this it sort of sets itself up to be, oh, you know, you're showing black people living in in, in kind of poverty situation and that kind of thing? Did you worry about that, or because it is an important part of the message as well, isn't it? Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like you know it also reflects reality as much as things you don't want things to be, be depicted in a certain way. I think the problem is that you don't want to just see projects where mm. black people are depicted in a certain way. As long as there is an opportunity to diversify that and you see black people which are also doing well in life and also making a ton of money and also really successful in which is apparent and which exists, there also are drug dealers. There also are people which are taking the wrong side of the law. And so, yeah, it's like it's fine to depict them. The problem is when you only depict one as if that's the only thing that happens, you know? So, no, I wasn't wasn't really worried about it. It was something in which it exists and in order to tell this story and get this this message across, it fit and it, and it doesn't feel out of place. It feels it feels right. Yeah, totally. Um, the contact lenses that you have in, were they, were they real? They looked itchy. Were they real lenses? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That, my friend, is CGI. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just great. Like in terms of what I put on, I had I had contacts on my fingers and, went, and I 
you know, I don't actually put the contacts in and you don't see it, but they fall off right. just before oh, okay. they go in my eye. And at that point in post, they change them to Movie magic. this cool looking <laughs> blue thing. I was like, yo, this is some Green Lantern stuff. And <laughs> yeah, man, it was amazing just to see and you, you perform and then you're like, I can't wait to see what they do with this. And it's, it's magical. So you mentioned the, the kind of the premise is that all crime is legal for 12 mm -hmm. hours. Um, so what, if, if you were involved in a purge, mm -hmm. what, what crime would you be most itching to get out there and do? I was trying to think about this and I thought maybe I'd let a load of animals out of a zoo. Be <laughs> like, in all honesty, I, I, I wouldn't. Like the purge, like when you actually think about it, all crime is legal for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. You leave your house, you could die instantly. Really, are you gonna take that chance? Are you gonna leave your house? Where you could be in a position where even if you stay in your house, you still run the risk of, of being killed. Like, no, you're not gonna heighten the risk because I feel like human beings, we value we value life, you know? Like the moment something bad is gonna happen, the first, first thing we do is we pray and we say, oh, please God, don't let this happen. And so we value our lives. So to be put in a situation where you can purge, I find it hard to believe that a majority of people would go out and purge, you know? Would you be watching it on the telly at least though? I, I would be watching it, yeah, <laughs> most definitely. I'd be interested to see what's happening and, and make sure that nothing's coming to my back door, you know? But, <laughs> <laughs> Um, it seems like horror films now are, are really kind of going through a golden age. Like Hereditary came out this year, was really great. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, Get Out. Do you think that's because we're in kind of sort of unsettling times and it's nice to get, it's cathartic to watch yeah, worse horror on the screen? Yeah, than Zoom it is. It's escapism at the yeah. end of the day. Like we go to the, to the cinemas to escape and we want to lose ourselves for that hour and a half in a movie theatre and then go home and be like, oh, that was crazy. I got to, you know, live in another world. And, and humans, we want to escape whether it's our, a certain situation within our lives or our whole life or whatever it is, this horror thing also, you know, takes place with the fact that this, what's happening in society is a horror. And so it's a metaphor for what's actually happening, mm. as well as it being a literal horror and having the jumps and scares. For me, it's more scary the fact that this is something in which is being spoken, spoken about as something that could potentially happen, as opposed to someone coming out of a scary mask. That's the real horror. And I, th I feel like all of these films in which are highlighting and talking about these subjects, there is an underlying message behind all of them. And outside of the scares, the films and the subject matters themselves are horrors and thrillers. With no disrespect to the directors and actors that came before you, I felt like the first Purge was the best Purge film. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon you can squeeze another prequel in before you catch up to the other storyline? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Although we can't say whether you'd be in it or not, because that would be a spoiler. That would be a spoiler. <laughs> so that would be a spoiler. Yeah. But um, I think that the, the franchise could definitely do another one. It's, you know, it ends in a way in which, you know, there, there, is, there is room for it. And so... We'll see what, what they want to do, but there's there's the, the TV series in which is in which is coming, and so whether the focus is then put to the TV series or there is another film to come after this, we've just got to wait and see. And what's next for you? So there's been a great kind of uh, we've been exporting a lot of young British actors to mm -hmm. Hollywood lately. Mm -hmm. Are you kind of looking to do more Hollywood films after this? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Can you tell us what's um, in the pipeline? Or? Um, yeah, like well, I've got I'm as much as I want to do, you know the biggest films and be on the biggest stages. I also want to do work here and, and champion and have an opportunity to tell more diverse stories. I've got another film coming out at the end of the summer called Versus, which is um, a British rap battle film. And um, oh, yeah. Now you it? said it, now you've got to do a rap for us, surely. But. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, oh, this is a, uh, <laughs> would you, all right, let's have a little freestyle. Yeah, yeah, please. I'm not going to battle you though. Yeah, like, oh, so you're going to leave me just, I'm just uh, Yeah, you're on your own here. Like I'm, I'm not going to, <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, you left me in a bit of a pickle. You left me in a surge. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should purge. Should I, I wasn't. I, you you wanted more, or you wanted yeah, more? Please. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what to do. You left me in a bit of a surge. Should I sit here with you, or should I go out and purge? I'm not really sure. I've got a lesson to learn, and so have you. Never back rap. Or, no, okay, there we go. Never, never rap battle a battle. Like if you don't wanna, go on. You finish it off. It's got to rhyme with purge. Oh, splurge. 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 <laughs> yes. Splurge. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we that did was it. that was amazing. I don't Thank know where we can go from Thank there. But I'm just gonna give you a yeah, round of applause man. and say, Appreciate well done. So look forward to the rap battle film. <laughs> yeah, You're man. clearly very good in it. And uh, thanks very much for talking to Appreciate us. Cheers.